Hey guys, Travis Gillespie here. We've been looking at linear equations and we've looked at three types so far. We've looked at uh, standard form, slope intercept form, and we've looked at point slope form. And now we're going to look at a special type of a linear equation. It's um, known as direct variation. So I'm going to get that written on the screen too. Direct variation. And I just want to change pen colors real quick. Uh, one of the types, I'm going to backtrack to the linear equations that we've looked at, one of the types was in slope-intercept form, and that was y is equal to mx plus b. And I said that today we're looking at a special uh, case or a special kind of linear equation, and it's called direct variation. And it's a special case of slope-intercept form here. Now direct variation, it's a special case of this linear equation here because your y-intercept or b here is going to equal zero. So let's just make a note here. Your y-int or intercept is going to equal zero. So now what this tells us about uh, this equation, what you're left with is y is equal to m or your slope times x. Okay. So again, direct variation, it's a special case of this equation where your y-intercept or b is equal to zero and you're left with y is equal to m times x. Now direct variation, it's written a little bit different than y equals m times x. So I'm going to give you one of the more general equations below where m is going to be replaced with another letter. Okay, so let's actually just backtrack for a second before I actually move forward. I don't want to make this too complicated. So linear equations, we've looked at three types. One of them's on the screen here. But those three types, they all meant the same thing. They were all the same thing. They were just written in different forms. So direct variation, it's just another form of a linear equation. It's written a little bit differently. And the way I'm going to write it out here, the way you uh, most commonly will see it is y is equal to k x. And I'm going to talk about k in a little bit. But if we look above now, if we look at these two equations, they look fairly similar. I have y on one side of the equation, x on the other side of the equation, and uh, x is being multiplied by some variable. In this case, it's being multiplied by m. And over here, it's being multiplied by k. So I have another form of the same equation or a linear equation here. Cool. Okay, so big deal. What is direct variation? Well, direct variation, it, it's when you have two variables that are proportional by a constant positive ratio. So what's that actually saying? Well, it, one way to think about it is if I want to isolate k, if I isolate k, well, how would I do that? I'm going to rewrite this over here. y is equal to kx, and the way that I want to isolate that is get k by itself. So I'm going to divide both sides by x here. Now these two will cancel out, and I'm left with, I'm going to rewrite this. All right, so now I'm just going to rewrite that, leading with the variable k. k is equal to y over x. So actually, I'm going to get rid of this information and just slide that over. I'm just going to slide it right under the other equation for a direct variation here. So now we have two different ways of looking at the same equation. But again, what was that definition telling us? Well, I'm going to put it in my own terms. If you isolate k, the ratio of y over x equals a constant. That's what it's really telling us. So again, if you isolate k, if you isolate k in this equation, we get k by itself. Well, the ratio of y over x will equal a constant. And that constant, we're actually going to call it k. All right, so k here, it's your constant, and it's actually known as your constant of proportionality, or uh, you might hear somebody call it constant of variation. It's the same thing, constant of proportionality. Okay, so k, it's our constant of proportionality, and we have direct variation here. As long as there's one catch, k can be any number other than zero. Okay, so this is true uh, when k is any number other than zero. So k cannot equal zero.